Discussion on Features of Cardiac Chamber Enlargements on ECG Atrial enlargement produces changes in the P wave. The normal P wave has a maximum amplitude of 2.5 mm and a maximum width of 2.5 mm. In right atrial enlargement, the amplitude increases, while in left atrial enlargement, it is a width that increases. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button, press the bell icon after that for all updates. Both amplitude and width increases in biatrial enlargement. P wave abnormalities are best assessed in lead 2 and V1. Normal P wave is upright in lead 2. In V1, a tiny initial spike is followed by a shallow negative wave. P mitral is a notched and broad P wave with taller second peak indicating left atrial enlargement. It may be noted that initial part of P wave is contributed by right atrium as it is activated first and the second part by left atrium which is activated later. Left atrial overload is associated with a prominent negative deflection of P wave in V1, the left atrial component. Tall peak P wave in right atrial enlargement is known as P pulmonale. It is found in core pulmonale. The tall P wave of right atrial enlargement in congenital heart disease is called P congenital tail. P wave axis is rightward in P pulmonale while it is leftward in P congenital tail. Initial peak of P wave in V1 more than 1.5 mm is also a feature of right atrial enlargement. Tall P in Epstein's anomaly is called Himalayan P wave. P tricuspidale has been described in tricuspid atresia. The pattern is mirror image of P mitral with initial peak taller than second peak. The P wave width and height are increased due to biatrial enlargement. While atrial enlargement is manifest as changes in P wave, ventricular chamber enlargements are mainly manifest in the QRS complex. There can be secondary changes in the ST segment and T waves. Left ventricular hypertrophy is divided into left ventricular volume overload and pressure overload patterns. Similarly, right ventricular hypertrophy is also divided into pressure and volume overload patterns. Pressure overload is also called systolic overload and volume overload as diastolic overload. Left ventricular volume overload is characterized by small narrow Q waves, tall R waves, with upright and tall T waves in lateral leads. Deep S waves are noted in leads V1 and V2. Left ventricular volume overload is noted in mitral and aortic regurgitation as well as ventricular septal defect with large left to right shunt and patent ductus arteriosus. Left ventricular pressure overload occurs in systemic hypertension, aortic stenosis and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. In addition to tall R waves in lateral leads and deep S waves in V1, V2, there will be downsloping ST segment depression and T wave inversion, that is LVH strain pattern. Right ventricular volume overload is manifest by RSR prime pattern in V1 or incomplete right bundle branch block pattern. This is typically seen in atrial septal defect with large left to right shunt. Right ventricular pressure overload manifests as tall R waves in V1 with ST depression and T inversion, that is RVH strain pattern, and deep S waves in V5, V6. In addition, there may be right axis deviation of QRS. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.